I'm Dr. Mark Brayman. We're going to help you understand the spread of COVID-19 with the highly advanced technologies of bubbles and fart spray. We're going to help you know how to navigate life in the time of COVID-19 as safely as possible, with the least anxiety as possible. It all comes down to understanding the application of one foundational principle, airflow. And we're going to have a little bit of fun in the process. Now before we get into the details, why should you listen to me? There are a lot of people, including in healthcare, saying a lot of different things. And a lot of them are pretty crazy. There is so much misinformation out there. So just very briefly, I'm an MD, fully trained, credentialed. Um, I'm familiar with a broad scope of healthcare. I'm very familiar with natural alternative medical therapies. I have a master's degree in epidemiology, the science of medical science, based on the science of epidemics like COVID. I am board certified and residency trained in preventive medicine and public health. This is the specialty that runs public health departments and the experts that deal with infectious disease and epidemics in populations. I'm also board certified in and have practiced occupational medicine for much of the last 22 years where we deal with everything having to do with the workplace, including breathing, testing, and determining who can wear safely different kinds of masks and respirators like firefighters. And we get people back to full function and working safely all the time. I'm very familiar with lifestyle medicine. I've been a leading expert in developing lifestyle medicine professionally, nationally, and internationally. I understand the science and application of using lifestyle as medicine, train other providers, and my medical practice is inside a large fitness center. I am truly independent, which has become quite rare, so I don't have anybody telling me what to do or say or what not to say. My perspectives are very independent. And I'm a passionate patient advocate. How do we make healthcare actually work for the people that it's supposed to work for? Patients. And not pursuing just excessive profit. Okay, enough. Let's get into it. Lockdowns, masks, social distancing, testing chaos, lack of availability of testing, medicines that are hyped up that end up hurting people or not doing anything, and lots and lots and lots of misinformation and anxiety and confusion. So just time out, you know, let's just stop. Here's the one thing you most need to understand. The science is becoming increasingly clear that this highly infectious virus is primarily transmitted from person to person through tiny infected droplets in the air. Even the virus that's found on surfaces and hands largely came to be on those surfaces and hands through the air most of the time. So here it is. Here's what you most need to understand for COVID-19 safety. Airflow, airflow, and yes, airflow. How is air moving potentially infectious tiny droplets around me? Where do the droplets start from? What is point A, an infected person? Notice we didn't say a sick person because the data thus far is showing that about 40% of infections are coming through people that have no symptoms. They are asymptomatic, meaning no symptoms. This is the real kicker with COVID-19 and why some are having a hard time appreciating the reality of the situation. Someone may be infected and spreading the virus and neither they nor those in contact with them know it. This seems to be especially true for kids. Yes, our children and schools and all of that. They may be spreading the virus like crazy and no one would know it. So infection is happening very much, mostly through the air coming out of an infected person. And the faster and the harder the air comes out, guess what? The more droplets come out, the more potential for infection, the farther they travel. Now there's a huge spectrum from just talking softly or whispering with hardly anything coming out to talking very loudly, to singing, to working, to exercising very vigorously, to coughing and sneezing, which is nature's way of maximally pushing air through to clear out the gunk which may include COVID gunk at this point. This is why masks for people in public is a good idea. It is for decreasing the spread of COVID-19 from those who are infected, especially in light of the fact that many may be infected and infectious and don't know it. 
Now, we usually wear masks to protect ourselves, but in the case of COVID-19, the main reason is to protect other people. Wearing a mask is a sign of caring about others and working together to get through this COVID thing together as soon as possible. It is not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of fear, making much to do about nothing or similar as too many would have you believe. If you have symptoms that might be COVID-19, you really shouldn't be out in public at all, mask or no mask. Please quarantine for the appropriate time, go get tested, and so forth. Be a good citizen. If you have to be around people who have symptoms, family members, that is when you want to wear a mask to protect yourself. And it becomes really important in that situation that it is a proper, truly protective mask, like an N95, that fits snugly to your face without the air gaps that are otherwise sort of okay, at least in the current context. You may also want to wear a protective mask if having to be around a lot of people not wearing masks. Now, the best evidence at this point is that most get infected through air that they breathe in that contains enough infectious tiny droplets from someone putting them out. In those who get symptoms or get sick, that usually occurs about three to five days later. So, airflow from point A, person who's infectious, to point B, as in you, is what we need to manage. Now, it is important to have perspective on this before we do details. The reality is that we are all mostly water. 70%, two thirds, just water. And that water is constantly going in and out, including more than we realize through breathing in and out. It is simply part of living that we share air and water in that air. Different bugs, different infectious critters have different levels of potential to be put out and taken in through our personal airflow. COVID-19 is one that seems to do this quite well, but in general, don't freak out about ever breathing air that someone else breathed out. Okay, that's just how nature is set up. For managing airflow for COVID-19 purposes, the main challenge is that we can't see or smell or touch these tiny droplets to know how to avoid them. There are some really cool videos online of high-tech science experiments showing these tiny droplets coming out from breathing and talking and coughing and sneezing. If you want to look at those, great. But most of us don't have the pure black rooms and lasers and high-speed cameras all around us all the time to figure all this out. So what do we need to do? We need to visualize the air we breathe. So we thought about this and we came up with some really high-tech solutions that require sophisticated expertise, as in bubbles and fart spray. Yes, you heard that right. There are actually a fair number of issues with different possible ways of seeing the air, but we thought that these got reasonably close to the dynamics of infectious droplets as they're likely to be around us and that are readily available to everyone. Though it is worth noting that bubbles will generally be better received. If you have trouble getting people to take COVID-19 seriously, however, the fart spray will induce a more visceral or motivating experience, simulating breathing potentially infectious droplets. Okay, so what about exercising? Exercising is generally a fabulous thing. Yes, you should do it. It's highly recommended. It's what we're built for. Most of those who die of COVID-19 have underlying medical conditions like diabetes and hypertension, conditions that are prevented or treated with lifestyle medicine like exercise. What about exercise indoors? What is the principle? Yes, airflow. So let's look at a very standard exercise scenario indoors. This happens to be the fit center where my practice is located treadmills, pedal machines, and so forth. Now, for context, there was one study from South Korea that found a huge spread of the virus in an aerobic class at a fitness center, but almost none in a yoga or similar small classes. So again, it's point A, air coming out, the airflow in between, and point B times the amount of time this is all going on in. So, some exercise classes really spread it, some don't seem to. So what are the factors of point A? How fast and hard are the people around you pumping the air out? So we wanted to simulate this with bubbles, little ones, lots of them, and with the fart spray. So this is what we did. To see the air in the fitness center as people are working out. So here's a few clips that we shot. So we just got two people, we put them on machines that were appropriately spaced 
about eight feet apart to see what happened if we simulated air with bubbles. And what we really found was that it was all over the place and it depended a lot on the airflow right around those particular machines in that particular location. So sometimes the bubbles went right to the ground, sometimes they floated one way, sometimes another way. Um, it was really hard to predict and to know what was going on. But here's a clip. You can see the bubbles going from one machine to the person next door. Not all of them were this heavy, if you will, um, but definitely traveling. Sometimes stray bubbles would float around for a long time and travel a long distance. Now it got really interesting when we used the fart spray, okay? Now this better simulates the tiny mist-like droplets. Bubbles are pretty heavy. They're gonna fall pretty quickly in general. So in this video, this is only two little sprays. This is not even an aerosol. This is just a little pump thing. And you see there is some delay and the air is swirling. It's generally not moving towards the people directly. So it has to swirl a little bit, about 20 seconds and wow, does it hit. Now, of course, the guy's trying to be macho and stoic, and but what he's saying is, this really stinks bad, okay? And the crazy thing about this was it lingered and lingered and lingered in this area. I was really worried about other people that would come through later because, oh, it still stunk, even though the air was swirling all around. The fine mist really hangs around. Now, how likely it is that others around you may be infectious is a really big factor also. Fitness facilities or workplaces that are doing things like screening members with the right questions and temperature checks every time they come through the doors are going to likely be far safer versus a center or workplace that is, you know, whatever, just come on in, regardless of your exposures lately or contacts or anything like that. If a fitness center or workplace is helping facilitate contact tracing and lab testing, then those are also big pluses and it will likely be a safer place to be. Now, what about outdoors? Uh, what is the principle? Again, it's airflow, airflow, airflow. And let's take a look. So we shot a quick clip using the same thing, our high-tech bubbles, just blowing it out on the sidewalk like you might be walking out through the neighborhood. And what happens? Point A, out, airflow in between, to point B, multiplied by time, and what we see is that in general, the bubbles disperse much more quickly, a much bigger area for the air to go. Um, it's a different ballpark, okay? It's not the same as indoors. A lot of people are getting kind of bent out of shape, including about when people are exercising outdoors. I see people exercising all by themselves out in the open air and they're wearing a mask. Don't need to, okay? Uh, not necessary. So comes down to point A, airflow out, point B, exposure, multiplied by time. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that sunlight is a great disinfectant. The UV light, the ultraviolet light, is an effective disinfectant. Now, it's not going to be instantaneous, as in a second or two. It tends to be minutes to really have its full effect. But again, it's a different ballpark if you're outdoors between the airflow, the dispersion, the UV light, assuming it's in daytime. Um, kills COVID pretty well, which is why people are looking at UV lights indoors to help cut down on exposure risk. So the best preventive approach is not masks or six feet of social distancing. Those things are fine, but they're very crude approaches to what really matters, which is, you know it now, airflow. You could be standing two feet apart or 10 feet apart, and it may or may not matter either way all depending on airflow. If the air is flowing away from the exposure, distance is almost irrelevant. If it's coming towards you, six feet may not be nearly enough. There was one study done in a restaurant where they identified cases of COVID and they were able to track it and map it very effectively to the airflow going through the restaurant. Air conditioning unit to the intake, they could see the dots line up, okay? It's airflow. It's not just the numbers of feet of physical distance. There's nothing really that magical about six feet, okay? It's airflow. Six feet is just a crude estimate of airflow dynamics. So what is the practical application? 
don't worry much about exercising outdoors, either for yourself or for other people. Give people out jogging a thumbs up, not a scowl or a curse or threats because they're not wearing a mask out exercising by themselves. Yes, if you're gonna pass directly, give people space, don't bunch up, stay with your own household, all those basic sorts of airflow issues. Generally, I don't recommend wearing a mask while you're trying to exercise vigorously. If you're doing yoga or something like that, fine. Depending on how vigorous it is, how intense it is, yoga can be vigorous and intense. But in general, it's not such a great idea. Now, obviously firefighters wear you know, the big face shields, but they've got a lot of different things going for them. So do what you can with masks if you're gonna be indoors around other people. Um, but if you're gonna to try to exercise really vigorously, I'd really encourage you to try to get outside, whether it's at a fitness center or not. And just be looking for and paying attention to what direction is the air moving around you. Be on the side of reality, not the talking heads, not the fear mongers, not the blowhards that are all over the place these days, including on major TV networks and leading politicians, shall we say. Help others do life and work safely. Play with your bubbles and possibly fart spray carefully, as may be helpful. And we can do mitigation and manage this COVID-19 thing and still have fun and help each other at the same time. I'm Dr. Mark Brayman, empowering you to live healthy, happy, whole. Let's work together, take care of each other, and based on good physics and science, get through this pandemic thing as quickly as possible and as safely as possible.